Um, are you okay? No, Matt calls himself having a bake sale. I really think he's poisoning the entire school population. I doubt it. L let me try one. Um, no. I will not bear witness to murder. Do not eat that. Uh, my little brother replaced the sugar with salt. You jerk. Oh, well, here. Here, I have some water. What is that? Moose Park water? That tastes like metal. Y'all y'all just want me to die today, clearly. Yeah, everyone knows Moose Park tastes like nickel and dime juice. Hey, how do you know what metal tastes like? Oh, okay, well, well, honestly, most of the elements in our world are metals. We've been studying the periodic table, and the bulk of the elements are actually metals. They're on the left of this stair-step line. So, here's a rock, and here's a gold ring. Well, you've got to stop pulling stuff out of thin air. It's freaking everyone out. That ring isn't gold. I can tell it isn't. <sighs> okay, well, which one is metal? Um, obviously the ring. How do you know? Hmm. I mean, look at it, it's shiny. Absolutely. Metals have certain properties that non-metals do not have. They're shiny, malleable, which means they're bendy. And most are solids at room temperature. They have high melting and boiling points, and they are ductile, so they can be bent into sheets and wires. Non-metals, the ones on the right side, except for hydrogen, are opposite. They're dull, brittle, they can be solids, liquids, or gases at room temperature. They have low melting and boiling points. So that salt that you bake those disgusting cookies with, Ooh. is it a metal or a non-metal? Um, it's not shiny or malleable. But it has a high melting point and can conduct electricity in a solution. Oh, um, sounds like it's both to me. That's because it is. Table salt is not one element. It's actually two. It's a compound. Table salt is a compound composed of sodium, a metal, and chlorine, a nonmetal, bonded together. Uh, why would a metal and nonmetal be bonded together? Well, all atoms prefer to have their outer electron shell full. Most of the atoms we discuss prefer to have eight electrons on their valence shell. And they can do this by losing electrons or gaining electrons. Oh, right. You talked about ions like last year or something. I can't remember. Right. Here's lithium, a metal. It has one electron on its valence shell, but it would prefer eight. Would it be easier for lithium to gain seven electrons or to lose one electron? Oh, just, just shed one. Right. And since it lost that negative electron, it becomes... Positively charged. Yep. A positive one charge, to be exact. So, where does that electron go? So, here's fluorine. It has seven valence electrons, but it would prefer eight. Oh, it accepts the one electron. Absolutely. Metals tend to lose electrons and become positively charged cations whereas nonmetals gain electrons to become negatively charged anions. Now, as we discussed last time, opposite charges attract. So the lithium ion and the fluorine ion attract one another to become lithium fluoride. This is called an ionic bond. This is just what salt does in sodium chloride, the bond created between oppositely charged ions when atoms lose or gain electrons. Now, even though lithium lost electrons and fluorine gained electrons, the total number of electrons in this entire compound is equal to the total number of protons in the compound. So the final compound is what we call... Oh, neutral. Right. So um, give me two elements. Uh, uh, carbon. Oxygen. How would carbon and oxygen form an ionic bond? Well, uh, carbon what, wants eight valence electrons, and it only has four. So I guess since it's a nonmetal, it can steal four of oxygen's electrons. Wait, but oxygen is still not stable. Um, why is there so much stealing? Like, can't we all just share? <laughs> That's exactly what happens, particularly with two nonmetals. There are many oxygen and carbon atoms available in any given amount of the two elements. 
two oxygens would just move up and share their two lone electrons with carbon's four lone electrons. And this is called a covalent bond. This tends to occur with two or more nonmetals. Oh, so now carbon has eight and the two oxygens have eight. Okay, that makes sense. Let's try this one. If hydrogen and oxygen were to combine, what type of bond would it form? Ionic or covalent? Um, let's see. Ionic because hydrogen is a metal and oxygen is a non-metal. Um, hydrogen is a metal? Since when? <laughs> right. Hydrogen is the only non-metal on the left side. It was best to put it in group one because it only has one valence electron, just as all of the elements in group one. Oh, well, these are two non-metals, so they will form a covalent bond. Do you know what the name of this molecule is? Uh, it looks very familiar. It's dihydrogen monoxide. Dihydrogen mono what? What's going on? All covalent molecules follow a strict naming pattern set forth by IUPAC, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So, let's work on this. Here we have H2O. That's the chemical formula. The first thing we want to do, write both names in the formula. That would just be hydrogen and oxygen. Now it's time to count the number of atoms. We know the number of atoms based on subscripts. So we have two hydrogens. And if you don't see a subscript, that means it's one. So one oxygen. Then we want to assign prefixes. We have a prefix for each number. And usually you won't have to worry about anything over 10. So if we have two hydrogens, its prefix would be di. And what about oxygen? Um, mono oxygen? Uh, not quite. So, we always want to change the ending of the second atom to I, D, E. So not mono oxygen, but mono... Mono oxygide? Uh, close. Not oxygide. Just oxide. Okay, so cool. monoxide, right? That doesn't sound right. No, we don't want to have two vowels next to each other either. So let's oh, just let me call my mama because my science teacher thinks he's an English teacher now. Like, what is this? <laughs> it's just going to be monoxide. The full name of this is dihydrogen monoxide. So naming chemical compounds, they have a lot of specific rules that only apply in certain scenarios. So practice makes perfect. You know, I just work here. I didn't make up the rules. Wait, H2O, is this water? It is water. Oh, so CO2, that's carbon dioxide. Indeed. Why wasn't it monocarbon dioxide? So the first atom only gets a prefix if it's greater than one. Uh, why don't we do any of this with sodium chloride then? Uh, we did, but sodium chloride is ionic. We don't use any prefixes when naming them. So here's an ionic compound. Li3N. To name it, it's simply... Ooh, lithium nitride. <laughs> lithium nitride. Oh my gosh, this class. Uh, so, if there are no prefixes, how would we know the number of atoms? Well, it goes back to the formation of ions and their desire to be stable. Nitrogen has five electrons, and it needs to gain how many electrons to be stable? Um, three. Right, which would give it a charge of negative three. So lithium has one valence electron and would prefer to lose how many? Hey, just one, that lone electron. Right. We call these oxidation numbers. The number of electrons an atom has to lose or gain to become stable. So if nitrogen has to gain three electrons to become stable and lithium only has one electron to give, it takes three lithium atoms to stabilize one nitrogen. Okay, so... Can we just save some time, cross them, and bring them down? Yes, you absolutely can. Oh, okay. Thank you. Like, yeah. I didn't know we needed to, to do all of that. Who sat around and made up all of these rules? Probably Mickens. Like, he has what? no life. 
fact, because I know he made up the no phone policy in our county. And he thinks that he's <gasps> going to get away with Mickens. it, but he's really not. How could you? Well, again, science is organized by systems. With all of the elements on the periodic table, there are even more combinations now that they can bond together. With so many possibilities, we don't need a million different ways to name and write these compounds, especially when so many people work with these compounds across the globe. Scientists felt the need to create a uniform way to name and write these compounds. So that if you go to work in a lab on the other side of the ah, world- we'd still know what we're working with. Exactly. So, uh, Matt, I hope you don't get sued for putting sodium chloride in those cookies of yours. Sued? Why would I get sued? Because that's assault. Get it? Like, y'all don't get, like the We crime. get it. It's just not funny. No, because sodium. No. We get it. We get it. We. It's just not funny. It's not funny. Let me explain it again. So, like, sodium chloride is the chemical name for table salt. And so I was saying that you could get sued because assault 